Lukaku or Harry Kane? Who's your choice? Who's going to be top scorer? You let me know. And by the way, keep it going. Spread the word. The Ultimate Soccer Show. It's about you, me, the game, and getting big. No subscriptions. You don't even subscribe. Just tune in. That's all you got to do. You want to subscribe? Much love. I accept it. But first of all, tune in, spread the word, get used to it, and send an email to fifascup at gmail.com. F I F A S C U P at gmail.com. Fifascup at gmail.com. Now, we got all that out of the way. Jack Grealish. What's going to happen to Jack Grealish? Is it going to be a success at Man City? Is he going to fit in? Hey, champions are made of champions. He hasn't won anything. Does he go to Man City and become a flop? Is he really just average compared to what they got? You know, when you think of players that Man City have let go, Bernardo, I think that, uh, yes, Jack's a great player, but it's got to go right and it's got to go right quick. Otherwise, confidence can hit the floor and it can stay on the floor. Jack needs to get something going. The Community Shield, the loss to Leicester, that's not exactly the way to start this going good. So, a good week in training, everything's bubbly, new world, he's had more time to adapt to Manchester in the shitty weather. Maybe when he goes up against Spurs on the weekend, it's a different story. But who knows what Pep is picking in the middle? Very interesting. I mean, let's face it, they got a lot of talent. So, Jack Grealish, 100 million, England's expensive player, most expensive player soon to be eclipsed by Harry Kane. Now, will it go good? It better go good for Jack Grealish. If it doesn't go good, there's trouble of brewing. Trouble brewing. Like I said, this movie playing right now, you'll be able to see it after this and my big yap and getting stuff. I'm going to go to a few emails before we go, but after my big yap and the emails, you'll get this highlight reel behind me in real time on your computer screen so you can enjoy it better with the soundtrack. The soundtrack's on there, but it's a little bit down so you can hear my big yap. Now, moving on. Kneeling. I've had enough of the kneeling. We in football are not racists. Over in England, we are not racists. We are probably the most cosmopolitan population on the planet. We get on with all of our people. Being white is not a crime. And racism is not groomed or bred in a football stadium. Racism is groomed, groomed and bred at your kitchen table with someone as an, a parent who's a racist. That's where that starts. Football stadiums are not where racism is rampant and rampant. So therefore, to the authorities, I say, get off your, your racism thing. Really push it aside. There are better things to promote that can defeat racism than head-on negative promotion. Honestly, the game is a beautiful game. Promote it beautifully. Don't even recognise racism and help to dismiss it. It's like back in the day, in the early days in Britain, when the IRA was fighting the British in Ireland. The British government and the British media they said, right, don't promote this, just, just die it down, don't promote it, don't say nothing. And you know what? It helped to quash it. So, don't promote racism, ignore it. We're all just people. We are stronger than that crap. Anyway, enough of that. But hey, football stadiums, not the place for the racism. Really, really, really not. Now, the COVID. Football clubs are going to get in big trouble here. They're going to get in real big trouble. They're going to start talking COVID. You're going to check your phone, check your pass, check your health. Yada, 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 yada. I think that is going to hurt sales. So watch out for that to start hurting the clubs financially. People staying away. The club's starting to drop. And uh, maybe demonstrations, in fact, demonstrations outside the clubs. Uh, maybe pandemonium, a little bit of violence. Um, but I can, I can see it getting out of hand. Uh, football fans, when you start playing with their freedom and their justice and uh, their well-being and freedom of life, freedom of movement, freedom of existence in their club. Don't forget, their club is like a shrine. Going into your home soccer stadium is like going to church for the most devout Christian or going to a mosque for the most devout Muslim 
etc. Right, etc. So, I think this is going to bring trouble for football clubs, especially uh, the bigger clubs that are starting to mouth off about it. So, uh, watch that happening. Now, by the way, the scores on the doors. Remember, keep your eye on them scores. They're coming up too. That's what I'm thinking this weekend, and. Uh, not that the scores may be on the number, but I'm thinking that's what the results should be. Now, anyway, it's early season. Things can go crazy. Things will be crazy this weekend. I'm looking at Brentford. Hopefully, if they want to survive, this weekend is where Brentford gets a good result against Arsenal. It should happen. It could happen. Because quite frankly, I think Arteta, and this is the only club I'm going to touch on. Next show, I'll touch the clubs. But this club, Arteta, Arsenal, he's not going to make Arsenal great. There's no chance that Arteta can make Arsenal great. They don't have the players. They don't have the spending ability. And quite frankly, they're not attractive for anybody to move to. Arsenal is a ghost of a club. There's nothing great about Arsenal whatsoever. It's like watching Man United try to get another title. It's well out of their grasp. Arsenal, to get in the top four, is a laugh and a joke. They're well off it. And Arteta is not the guy to take Arsenal to the glory land. It ain't going to happen. But anyway, there's going to be a lot happening this season. I would say this. Promote this channel to as many as you can. We have a laugh and a joke. I need you to send the emails. We're going to get to that. To make me get back to you. And we build this family bigger. I'll guide you each week in the EPL and other leagues wherever your emails lead. So that's what it is. Now... Quick email, Geraldo from Medellin in Colombia asks, will Man United win the league? Categorically, not a chance, not a chance. United, are, Manchester United are literally three years at best away from a, 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 a league title. They don't have the players in defence to shore it up in the crucial games. They always make little mistakes because they're not that quality. As this team decays, they're going to have problems at the back before they have at the front. See, United used to have more defensive posture than offensive. Now they've got too much offence and not enough defence. And quite frankly, what they do have in midfield, even Pogba, forget about it. He only plays when he wants to play. But in midfield, even with Fernandes, if they get pushed around by someone with physical strength, those two are out of the game. I've seen it too many times. So Man United, not a chance. The lead title this year, though, I think is between Chelsea and uh, and Manchester City. Manchester City will be your favourite. But I think Chelsea's got a good chance too. Tuchel's done a fantastic job since he got there. Uh, the European champions, who would have said that before he took over? Frank Lampard must be throwing up in the alleys. Uh, talk about injustice. He should never have been sacked. They needed to give him more time. But it certainly proves that Chelsea players weren't pulling their socks up for Frank. And it certainly proves that them Chelsea players helped to get Frank the sack. That's what it looks like and that's what it really does look like. But anyway, back to the start of the season. It's all kicking off. All the results are up there. You're going to get this reel after the show and uh, send the emails. And uh, last email comes in from Steve. Yes, another Steve, but it's the truth. It's the way it happens. The next one comes in from Steve. He's from Stoke. And Steve asks, can Stoke City get back in the Premier League? Steve, hate to blow your bubble. Not with the squad they've got. Not with the finances they've got. Got a beautiful stadium, but you don't have a team to play in it. Uh, you're going to finish mid-table to, I would say... Out of all those teams, 23s to... You're going to be anywhere from 14 to 17. That's about as best it can be. I just really don't see you, Steve. And Steve is from a place called Sneed Green in, uh, in Stoke-on-Trent, which is not far away from their ground. I took a little liberty to look it up on the map. So, um, but anyway, as I leave you, each week as we go, I'm going to leave you a story. And it's not a short story, it's a shirt story. So, moving forward tonight, we're wearing the England shirt because it's the England English Premier League we're talking about. Man City is going to win it. Top four is Liverpool, Chelsea, Man U, Man City in that order, getting relegated, Brentford, Norwich, and those poor people, Watford, who go up and down like a yo-yo. Right, 
Well, the next show, we wear another shirt. And we tell you the story about that club with the shirt we're wearing. And incidentally, the next club shirt we're wearing is from Medellin, Colombia. And that's Atletico Nacional. A very, very big club in Colombia. Okay, people, we'll talk to you soon. And uh, check out the reel after this. It's coming up. Check out the results and drop an email to fifascup at gmail.com and let me know what you are thinking. Because I'll tell you what, with hours to go to the start of the season, I'm going to be glued. And there's going to be more videos coming thick and fast. Thanks, guys. And thanks for the messages and all the love. And hey, tell your buddies about it. And let's get this going. And we'll have a laugh. Thank you.